Welcome this is Vanati and we're going to discuss the anterior triangle of neck today. So in this video we're going to discuss the boundaries and subdivisions of the anterior triangle and in detail we're going to learn about each of those subdivisions. Starting off with the boundaries, the anterior triangle is anteriorly bounded by the anterior median line of neck, posteriorly bounded by the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Base is formed by the lower border of mandible and the line joining angle of mandible to the mastoid process. Apex is formed by the suprasternal notch and the roof is formed by deep cervical fascia. Remember all the subdivisions of the anterior and posterior triangle have only the deep cervical fascia as their roof. Moving on to the subdivisions, the anterior triangle is further divided into four subdivisions by three muscles which are the anterior belly of digastric, posterior belly of digastric and the superior belly of omohyoid. So the subdivisions formed are the submental triangle, the digastric triangle, the carotid triangle and the muscular triangle. So we are going to further discuss in detail about each of these triangles. Starting off with the submental triangle boundaries. The submental triangle is laterally bounded and on both sides by the anterior belly of digastric. The base is formed by the body of hyoid. The apex is formed by the symphysis menti and the roof is formed by the deep cervical fascia. The floor is formed by a single muscle which is the mylohyoid muscle from both sides and they meet at the median fibrous raphae. Then moving on to the contents, there are only two contents in the submental triangle which are the submental lymph nodes and the submental veins. Next, we have the digastric triangle. The digastric triangle is called so because it's bounded on two sides by the anterior and posterior belly of digastric muscle. So talking about the boundaries, the anterior inferior boundary is formed by the anterior belly of digastric Posterior inferior boundary is formed by the posterior belly of digastric. The base is formed by the base of mandible and the imaginary line joining the angle of mandible to the mastoid process. The apex is formed by the intermediate tendon of digastric muscle and the roof is formed by the deep cervical fascia. The floor is formed by three muscles which are the mylohyoid, the hyoglossus and the middle constrictor. The digastric triangle is further subdivided into two parts by a ligament called the stylomandibular ligament. The stylomandibular ligament runs from the styloid process, reaches the angle of mandible and then further below. It divides the digastric triangle into two parts namely the anterior and the posterior part. Now as we move on to the contents of the digastric triangle, we are going to discuss the contents of the anterior and the posterior parts separately. Starting off with the contents of the anterior part of digastric triangle, the first content is the submandibular salivary gland. And then we have the submandibular lymph nodes and then the hypoglossal nerve. Finally, we have the two vessels which are the facial artery and the facial vein. So, the five contents of the anterior part of digastric triangle are the submandibular salivary gland, submandibular lymph nodes, hypoglossal nerve, facial artery and facial vein.
Next, we are moving on to the contents of the posterior part of digastric triangle. First, we have our external carotid artery and the carotid sheath along with its contents which are the internal jugular vein, vagus nerve and the internal carotid artery. Then we have the styloid process and the deep part of parotid gland. We know the parotid gland is situated over here. The deep part of the gland extends into the posterior part of the digastric triangle. And finally, we have the two nerves which are the styloglossus nerve and the pharyngeal branch of vagus nerve. And then we have the carotid triangle. Starting off with the boundaries, the carotid triangle is antero inferiorly bounded by the superior belly of homohyoid, superiorly bounded by the posterior belly of digastric, and posteriorly it's bounded by the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. The roof is formed by the deep cervical fascia, and the floor is formed by four muscles, which are the thyrohyoid, the hyoglossus, the middle constrictor and the inferior constrictor. So I repeat, in anti-clockwise direction, they are the thyrohyoid, the hyoglossus, the middle constrictor and the inferior constrictor. Moving on to the contents, the carotid triangle has a lot of contents. You may find it difficult to memorize all of them. So, I'd suggest you pay attention and remember them in the same order as we discuss. First, we have the common carotid artery from which arises the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. Then we have the carotid sinus and the carotid body followed by the internal jugular vein and the three nerves which are the spinal accessory nerve, vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve. And then we have the carotid sheath enclosing the internal carotid artery, vagus nerve and the internal jugular vein. Followed by it we have the anterior cervicalis and the first five branches of the external carotid artery which are the superior thyroid artery, ascending pharyngeal artery, lingual artery, facial artery and the occipital artery. And finally we have the cervical lymph nodes. So let me run the contents of the carotid triangle once again. First we start off with the five carotid structures which are the common carotid artery from which we have the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery, the carotid sinus and the carotid body, the five structures. And then we have the venous structure which is the internal jugular vein followed by the three nerves which are the spinal accessory nerve, the vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve. And then we have the carotid sheath which covers the internal carotid artery, the vagus nerve and the internal jugular vein. And now we are going to talk about the smaller structures branching over here which are the ansa cervicalis which originates from the C1, C2 and C3 loops and reaches the hypoglossal nerve as a superficial content and then we have the first five branches of the external carotid artery. In ascending order they are the superior thyroid artery, the ascending pharyngeal artery, lingual artery, facial artery and the occipital artery. And finally we have the cervical lymph nodes. That's it for the contents of the carotid triangle. So we're moving on to the last triangle which is the muscular triangle. Starting off with the boundaries, the muscular triangle is anteriorly bounded by the anterior median line of the neck, superiorly bounded by the superior belly of homohyoid and posterior inferiorly bounded by the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. We know the sternocleidomastoid obliquely runs over here. So 
the anterior one third part of it forms the posterior inferior boundary for the muscular triangle. The roof, as we know, is formed by the deep cervical fascia. The floor and contents of the muscular triangle are pretty much the same muscles, which are the sternohyoid, the sternothyroid, and the thyrohyoid. And finally, we have a few deeper structures of the muscular triangle, which are the trachea, the thyroid gland, and the esophagus. That's it about the anterior triangle. In case you have not watched the introduction to triangles and posterior triangle video, you can go back and click the link and watch the video. And in both these videos, you would have come across this structure called the deep cervical fascia which forms the roof of both the anterior and the posterior triangle. In case you don't have an idea about what this structure is, you're not very clear about it, don't worry because it will be uploaded in the next Where part 3 video. Learn in detail about the deep cervical fascia, the parts of it and learn how to trace it. That's it for now. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.